Hello everyone, this is Charles Pradjerichi here, host of On Deck and the Mass Deal Podcast. And I'd like to take this moment and share with you why I use Anchor.fm. Anchor makes it easy for podcast hosts looking to build their brands. Plus, what's even more unique is you don't need much expensive equipment to record and upload your shows. You'll not only be provided with your audience reach, but get this, you'll have the opportunities to be matched up with sponsors and make some money doing it. Sounds good, huh? Make sure to cash in on your career by simply going to anchor.fm. And now, time to get in the huddle with your host, Charles Prodigy, here on the Mass Steel Podcast. Hey, you blink, I'll cut your eyelids off. Don't you blink. Let's go. You get where you feel like you can rush the quarterback. You understand? Rush the quarterback. Thanks in for the touchdown. And there's the coup de grace. Do you have room in the trophy for another one there? You got six of them. Now you're the winningest franchise in NFL history. We'll make room. And welcome once again, everybody, to another edition here of the Mass Steel Podcast. Well, of course, here's truly Charles Prize of Richie here, uh, which you can follow me here on social media on Twitter at Mass Steel CGR. Mass Steel Podcast on Instagram is at Mass of Steel Nation. Uh, definitely getting some stuff right now. Just a recap once again. Remember, uh, Dave DeCastro no longer is Steelers. He was released on Thursday, as uh, we found out. And it sounded like it was a non-football injury. Uh, said he was having uh, ankle issues uh, recently and uh, definitely could have kept him months. Uh, question is, uh, too, will you consider retiring as well? And now you got, like, the newly acquired right guard for the Steelers at this point in time and Trey uh, Turner here. Uh, Trey Turner, he's definitely been puzzled with a few injuries to the last uh, three seasons. But – like I said, the only first impressions I'm getting off this guy right now is that he could probably be a help in the running game. The only concern is right now, as pointed out by uh, one of the many people in, in the media, in more particular, host of 93.7, the fan, the Pony Miller Show, and it's Philip Pony. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, at the Pony Express. Uh, basically, he was uh, found out from an insider, too. Uh, it more relates to uh, Trey uh, Turner, was that – he was terrible last year. When he wasn't in, injured, the biggest impact he was making on games was by taking horrible penalties, just to give you an idea. And for the most part, when we look at a guy like Trey Turner right here, who's a five-time pro bowler uh, in his uh, career, uh, he went to the Super Bowl with the Carolina Panthers back in 2015 when they had that 15-1 uh, regular season record. Almost went undefeated right there. But, I mean, it wasn't a matter. I mean, they lost in the Super Bowl anyway uh, to a very good uh, defense and the Denver Broncos, which was Peyton Manning's last as, as a Bronco right there in his NFL playing career. And you, you saw what happened in 2015, just give you a sample size right there. I mean, uh, in the run game in particular, uh, they were second overall, uh, racking up 2,282 yards, averaging, averaging nearly 143 yards a game, uh, which is one of the biggest things right there. Uh, the biggest uh, issue I, I take right there, too, is the sacks uh, that have been giving up. I mean, so you got, like, this new wave of the offensive lines we have been looking for out the off season, including starting from the end of 2019. I mean, there just seems to be a lot of stuff here at hand where we got to be a little bit more uh, concerned with because when we really break this thing down and dissect it a little bit further right now, I mean, you know, everyone knows Ben Rosberg's relationship with this offensive line, I mean, and how he's able to get some chemistry going. I think the interesting thing is right now, this is going to be uh, his second season back from elbow surgery, first full off season of rest. Remember, him and Cam Hayward had been participating in mini camp. Uh, right here. As we uh, look at it uh, from uh, this standpoint, uh, for right now, uh, listen, I I think chemistry of this offense line is going to be huge uh, right now as we look at things. Because one of the things we got going on right now 
I mean, looking at it too, uh, Brooke Parr was saying too with uh, David Castro's release, Steelers will have one returning star on the offensive line. Uh, true Sikor for more than likely he's going to be moving to left tackle from a spot um, right tackle uh, last off season. Uh, and remember, uh, left tackle that was occupied by Alejandro uh, Villanueva. So right here, I mean, you already look at it right now. Let's break down this offensive line once again, just to remind folks, uh, people just want to refresh your memories. I mean, you got Kevin Dawson right here. I mean, who I expect to continue to be the left guard. I think he's been the only solid, legitimate piece as far as new kids on the block uh, trying to protect Ben Rausberger, trying to get some running uh, lanes established. Obviously, I mean, he, he didn't do as much, but I think he did a good job. I mean, helping keep Ben protected. I mean, the skills were number one, the most uh, fewer sacks allowed. So, I mean, that's a good sign. But – Right now, I mean, how much is a guy right now like David DeCastro, a guy who's been a two-time All-Pro, six Pro Bowls, did not win a Super Bowl championship? Yes, of course. But he's been in the league uh, nine seasons. And we look at David DeCastro, I mean, for the most part, I mean, it has only been, I mean, the, the worst amount of starts he's had uh, as a starter was last year where he started 13 out of 13 games. And, uh, I mean, I mean, obviously that was a little bit of an eye-opener. I mean, when you hear some of the stuff that he was trying to play through, I mean, especially I think with the ankles and stuff, I mean, at the end of the day, he did his job to keep him on his feet. My, the biggest question I did pose on the last show was that will more sex uh, be uh, surrendered right now to chemistry? Then you, you look at it like a little bit further, too. No more Marquise Pouncey right now. So is that going to be uh, B.J. Finney or more likely Kendrick Green? And we remember with B.J. Uh, Finney right there, who's the guy who uh, fumbled the ball when Mason Rudolph was in there, uh, had a shoulder injury, and he was done for the season at that point. The, I mean, B.J. Finney, I think for the most part, I mean, when we uh, look at him too as well, I mean, Finney I, I don't think was as bad – Unfortunately, I think he does have that blemish he's got to wear on him as a Steeler. And you look at him and his uh, career here. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was uh, last with uh, the Bengals and the Seahawks. But still, I I mean, I thought he did a a decent job. I mean, for the most part. I mean, he played in 13 games in uh, 2016. The most he's he's played 16 games. It, and in 2019, he was only able to start four, but still, uh, listen, I, I think Finney is still not a bad uh, transitional piece for this line as uh, we look at it. So I'd like to hear your thoughts right now. Uh, feel free to hit me up, uh, leave me a comment. Uh, you can also, like, uh, if you guys are tuning into the Mastial Podcast. Feel free to tune in. You can just search the Facebook page, Mastial Podcast. If you guys want to leave a like, feel free. And if you guys ever want to follow it uh, by following through an at uh, handle, uh, you can just definitely look up at Man of Steel Nation uh, for the most part. So that's where we're uh, at right now as far as this goes on. And one of the questions, too, I think a lot of people were, like, looking at, too, because uh, I think the Steelers uh, did get a little bit of hot water with not reporting Ben Rossberger's, uh elbow injury right away. That was one of the things that was brought up by Rod Cook and Joe Starkey. And so I remember, I think the cap savings on this was going to be about, like, over eight and a quarter, eight and three quarter million dollars. Uh, with that release that happened. I'm going to go ahead and double check that as we uh, go along. Uh, for the most part, yeah, $8.75 million uh, they will be saving. He was going to be due to have a $14.3 million cap hit, just to recap, uh, for the Steelers' uh, salary. And now that he is gone right now, Will David DeCastro challenge this right now? Will there be, like, a, some sort of, like, a hearing on this uh, and uh, see 
uh, if they want like uh, like if he's gonna be need to be compensated because uh, if it's not football injury related. I mean, when we uh, look at – because remember, he played for the Dowell injury uh, last season and appeared to have recently suffered an ankle injury. Uh, and uh, that would be really uh, wondersome right there. And But the, the only thing was, when he did try fixing it uh, a year ago, uh, as far as the ankle, the bone spurs kept coming back. He said it nagged, he said it nagged me pretty bad all last year. He was never on the injury report for the ankle. He was on it for knee, hand, abdominal, and not injury related. So I think the Steelers right now are just trying to be in compliance with the league, uh, make sure they're not getting any hot water. If there's any kind of injury, you have to report. Got to do your diligence right there. And I would anticipate that, I mean, being the case right now as we uh, move a little bit forward on this right now. Uh, for the time being. So, uh, and like I said, I, I think my biggest takeaway, I mean, when we look at like uh, Trey Turner, let's just uh, go to the flip side of that right now. Uh, I mean, he's made uh, only nine starts a year ago when he was last with the LA Chargers in uh, SoFi Stadium, uh, especially when he played in that area with the Chargers. Uh, here's his injury history from what I looked up on Wikipedia. Uh, 2017, he missed the final three games uh, due to a concussion. Uh, 2018, he missed two weeks and three due to a concussion. Week 17, due to an ankle. Now, at a point, too, I mean, Trey Turner, uh, for the most part, in his uh, NFL I mean, career, like after his team uh, made the Super Bowl, despite losing, com- coming runner-up uh, to the Broncos, uh, and, and a year later, after they missed the playoffs, but following that offseason, 2017, uh, he signed a four-year, $45 million contract extension with $20.5 million guaranteed. Uh, he started 13 games at right guard before missing about three games with concussions. I mentioned he did return in the wild card round of the playoffs. Uh, but, but still, I mean, I mean, he, he earned his second consecutive uh, Pro Bowl in uh, 2016, and uh, definitely he was one of the most uh, respected uh, guards in the league right there. And, I mean, definitely a guy at the top of his game. Like I said, I, I only get concerned with right now, is Ben Ross we're going to feel comfortable? Is he going to be able to adapt right now? I mean, he's still got, like, question marks to across his offensive line right now. I mean, Zach uh, Banner... I mean, which, uh, by the way, too, I mean, he got injured in the very uh, first game of the season, I mean, with the Steelers, I mean, basically. And, uh, yeah. I mean, you got you got to wonder if like uh, this guy could be able to stay uh, healthy. I mean, for the most part. I mean, when when we looked at, I mean, uh, when he suffered a knee injury in the opener on the road against the Giants. I, I like his enthusiasm. I like his drive. Don't forget, he did beat out. I mean, by the way, too. I mean, for that position, I think Chuk's a core for. I mean, for. At, uh, tackle position, right tackle. I mean, I, I like I like his effort. I love his drive, but he still hasn't really proven much to me just yet. Availability is going to still be very key for this guy right here. Alejandro Villanueva, say what you will. I mean, some of the funky stuff. I mean, the last few years, as far as like doing stuff as team on the field. I, and no offense, I mean, I love Alejandro Villanueva, very respected. Maybe he also got the sense of two people kind of took him for granted, in my opinion. I really do feel like he was taken for granted uh, for what he did on this offensive line. I mean, he was uh, definitely uh, very key. I mean, obviously, he didn't really help much with the run game, but I mean, yeah, that, 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 that's going to be a guy that's going to be uh, hard to replace, in my opinion. We'll see how they uh, do right there. But I think the hugest one definitely is going to be without 
uh, life without Marquise Pouncey right now. I mean, not just for Ben Rosberg, but whoever steps in as a quarterback, whether it's Mace Ruff or Dwayne Haskins. That's a quarterback battle. We're going to find out this preseason how it relates who will be the number two guy on the depth chart behind Big Ben. So my, my uh, final takeaway and thoughts right now, uh, listen, I don't think the Steelers did do the Castro dirty. I mean, at the same time, I mean, if anything, listen, I mean, it's a lot of pressure right there. You don't want to be missing games. I can understand from that standpoint. But how much was he hiding and not opening up to Coach Mike Tomlin and, of course, uh, medical and training staff on that team? So did he slit his own throat in a way? Quite possible. We'll see. But uh, hopefully uh, he'll be able to get a successful surgery. I, I would like to see him have a few more years left. I mean, too bad for right now. It's not going to be with the Steelers. So let's go ahead and like uh, start uh, moving on right now uh, with this because I, I do like Trey Turner. I think Trey Turner will be an immediate impact with the run game, but protecting Ben Rosberger. Let's find out. Uh, hey, you blink, I'll cut your eyelids off. Don't you blink? I got you. Let's go. <laughs> 